falling for this type of guy is one of the number one reasons why so many women find themselves indefinitely single or in toxic relationships. And the most challenging part is the traits that this man represent are so ingrained and admired in our culture that we've stopped paying attention as to how dangerous they can be. So today I'm going to reveal how to spot these traits that fly under the radar for even the smartest of women and avoid being lured into an unfulfilling or even toxic relationship. In case you haven't noticed, there's a crisis in men today. And this could be an entire video on just that, but to simplify it, I'm gonna talk about three things. Number one, there's a mental health crisis. There's a high degree of men who are facing suicidal thoughts and addictions. There's a loss of identity because men are confused right now in terms of who they need to be, who they can be, who they should be. And there's a vacuum in this redefinition taking place that in the absence of knowing what to do, many men are opting to ground themselves in 1950s types uh, of values that are hurting the world and are hurting women. I've had thousands of conversations with women around what they're looking for in men. And I can share with confidence that most women are looking for a guy that they define as high quality, as a man who is decisive, a man who is confident, a man who's courageous, a man who can stand up for what he believes. A certain degree of fearlessness, if we want to call it that. Someone who can be strong uh, emotionally, but also physically. Someone who can take life by the handle and move with it. There's nothing wrong with wanting a guy who's the size of courageous and up for himself. The problem that I have with that incomplete definition is that it lacks nuance and it lacks a counterpart and a balance without which you will suffer in a relationship with a guy like that. If you're going for that alpha type of guy who can kick ass and take names, that type of guy is going to lack certain skills and qualities often, usually, that will make the relationship feel far less fulfilling for you and that will make the imbalance of the relationship one where you end up paying the price. What I want to do today is I want to take some time to redefine what a healthier version of attractiveness in men could look like and how to complete the picture between the type of guy you might have been going for that has not produced the results you want in your life to a different type of guy who might have some counterbalanced qualities that will serve you far better and will create a more fulfilling and more emotionally connected relationship. I'm gonna talk about four specific traits that women tend to fall for that typically get them into trouble when the traits are not balanced with other traits that I'll be sharing here. And then I'll share maybe a call to action of something you can do today to create more opportunities for yourself. The first trait that women fall for, get them in trouble, is certainty. They go for a guy who is confident or ultra confident or has a high degree of certainty. Nothing wrong with connecting with someone who has a sense of who he is and is not necessarily wanting to hear everybody's opinion before he takes action and who has the capacity to just step into life, take control of the situation when he needs to. The challenge that I have with certainty and the incompleteness of certainty and confidence is that there's plenty of guys who are incompetently confident who are harmfully confident, who are very convinced and convicted that what they're doing is good without taking a humble approach to maybe ask the question, is this really helping or hurting someone? Am I really doing something that is in the best interest of others versus just myself? Am I being selfless or selfish? So certainty and confidence need to be balanced with two things, humility and curiosity. And in all the cases of the values that I'm sharing now, it's not that you have to choose between one or the other, but if you have to choose between a guy who's extremely confident or a guy who's humble and curious, go for humble and curious because that guy's gonna find the truth, he's gonna find a way to make things happen, but he's not gonna do it at the expense of your heart, at the expense of the world. Number two is ambition. Who doesn't like a guy who has ambition? Listen, I work with women who are at the top of their career and their field, highly intelligent. So they're looking for someone who's ambitious. They're looking for someone who has his shit together. They're looking for someone who has the capacity to think of an idea and make it happen in the real world. The challenge with ambition, when it's not counterbalanced with these two traits, empathy and service, is that, again, it can become incredibly toxic. It can become one of those things where the ambition goes uh, against maybe values of connection, values of family, values of asking for your needs. 
So when you go for a guy, and you think about it in the past, if you've gone for guys who are overly ambitious, if they lack empathy, if they lack the capacity to step into service, that ambition is going to turn into something against you because that, that guy who has the capacity to think of something and no matter what happens, make it happen, you might be the obstacle at times of what he wants to do and he'll trample over you as easily as he's doing it in the world because he lacks that capacity to be empathetic and to truly be of service. Now, before I go and share my last two traits that get women into trouble, if you're a single woman watching this, and you've been at this for a while, you've been watching videos, you've been doing a bunch of things and you're still single, my hypothesis is you don't fully understand the true reason, the root cause of why you're single. So what I've done is I've taken 12 years of helping women find love in different challenging situations, different walks of life, different continents, and I put together a quiz that can share with you in about 60 seconds the root cause of why you're single. So if you wanna participate, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description, you'll find a page that looks like this, answer a few simple questions, and you'll find two things. The answer to the question, why you're still single, and a report that's gonna show you based on your specific blind spot, the number one thing you can do starting today to reverse this trend and attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. The third trait that gets women into trouble consistently is decisiveness. Again, who doesn't like a guy who can think of something, make a decision, and take action in the world? Right? I mean, that's an attractive feature in a guy. The challenge with decisiveness, which is a form of courage, when it's not counterbalanced with another form of courage called vulnerability, is that the lack of vulnerability will often make the person make decisions that don't take into account certain weaknesses, that don't take into account certain needs outside of himself. So when you go for that guy who's ultra decisive, who's just thinking of and just thinking on his feet and making things happen, make sure that he has an equal capacity to go into his heart and share what might not be good about his plan, what might be hurtful, who has the capacity to hear feedback and to share from a human perspective why he's making that decision. Again, if you have to choose between a guy who's courageous in decisiveness or courageous in vulnerability, 10 times out of 10 choose courageous invulnerability because with vulnerability will come emotional connection. There is no emotional connection without vulnerability. And some guys who have learned maybe through example of others and sometimes their parents or their grandparents to act a certain way and who are really single-mindedly focused on making something happen without taking a deep breath going into their hearts and noticing, is this really good for others? Is this really helpful? Is this taking into account this or this challenge? Without that, you'll connect with guys who are decisive, but lack the capacity to make things that are good for the greater good. The last one is going to be physical strength. Why? Because who, I mean, if I were to, in a room full of 100 women, ask the question, would you prefer for your guy to be taller or shorter? 99% of the women will say taller. Do you prefer for the guy to be stronger or weaker? Most women will say stronger. Nothing wrong with that, but you want to make sure that the physical strength is balanced with two things. Number one, mental health. There's plenty of guys who are doing great things at the gym, but who lack mental clarity and who lack a capacity to think in a way that considers more than just their own wants and selfish needs. So kindness and mental health need to counterbalance physical strength. If you have a guy who's physically strong but he's kind, he's not going to abuse that into a way that's intimidating or bullying for others. If he lacks the kindness, he might. So I'm not saying by sharing this that you shouldn't go for guys who are certain or who are ambitious, who are decisive, is that most women in this day and age have gone for that type of guy without considering the counterbalance that needs to be in place for them not to be trampled over in the pursuit for his highest level truth. So what now? So two challenges. Number one, if you're giving guys right now in your life a hall pass for these qualities without considering the alternative, please take a deep breath, step back and ask yourself the question, is this gonna work for me if these other things are not present? So if there's guys in your life that you have maybe have lacked some ambition and some degree of confidence, but have the other qualities that I'm giving you right now, that you might wanna give them a second chance and think, 
if there's something that can happen that goes beyond your original definition of that relationship. Hope this is helpful and useful. Uh, if it is, it would mean the world to me if you click like and subscribe. Maybe share this with someone who needs to hear it. And if you want to continue learning how to attract the relationship you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques, you can watch the next video right here.